your engineering impacts the cultures around you and the community around you. I think what my degree here at Mines really helped me uh, is in just learning how to solve difficult problems. I think just having a degree and the experience at Mines with um, the high quality professors here will get my foot in the door most places. I'm already seeing how it's setting me up for success. I have a job that I'm starting here in about two weeks actually. Mines has the tools to develop your, your thoughts and whatever you want to do in your life. I'm proud of being here and I'm fortunate to be here. Just talking to people from different communities, different disciplines, different backgrounds, it ha I've become a better engineer and better person. I came to Mines ready and excited to learn new things and I'm leaving Mines um, very prepared and knowing that I can take on any challenge and learn anything that comes my way. I came to Mines curious and I'm leaving Mines even more curious about the world around me. I came to Mines as a naive uh, chemist with, uh, felt like the wind was at my back. Uh, and I'm now leaving Mines, a, uh, a PhD graduate in chemical engineering, uh, a husband and a father. To my parents, thank you so much for supporting me through my journey, my whole life, and through my graduate journey. From friends, from family, from the faculty and staff at Mines, I wouldn't be where I'm at today without all of you. I would like to thank everyone for helping me, for supporting me, for having my back, and for tolerating me at times. Thank you to all of my friends and family, and then I could not have done this without my advisor, John Spear. Primeramente a mis padres que han sido los que me han apoyado siempre y por ellos estoy acá y para ellos es todo. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the platform party. Today's ceremonial pomp and circumstance was performed and recorded by students in the Minds Music Program. The processional is led by Dr. John Spear, Faculty Distinguished Lecturer, and Dr. Alina Handorian, Faculty Senate Representative. Dr. Spear is carrying the University Mace, a symbol of knowledge and authority dating back to the 13th century, and is topped by Blaster, our beloved school mascot. Dr. Handorian is carrying a replica of the 16th century book, the Terra Metallica, widely considered to be the foundational book on mining and metallurgy. This book represents the body of knowledge shared by minds, faculty, and students, and its opening and closing on stage indicate the beginning and closing of today's ceremony. Platform party members include President Paul Johnson and Provost Dr. Rick Holtz, academic department heads and deans and vice presidents. Colorado School of Mines trustees including alumnus and chairman Tom Jordan, alumnus and vice chairman Jesus Salazar, alumna and trustee Patty Starzer, trustee Judith Seinberg, Continuing the processional are representatives from Mines faculty and our doctoral and master's candidates entering Mar K Stadium from the east end of Campbell Field. Today we will confer 273 master's, professional, and 28 doctoral degrees. 
flags on stage represent the home nations of our graduates, including Angola, Australia, Brazil, Canada, Chile, China, Colombia, Eritrea, France, Germany, Ghana, India, Indonesia, Iran, Kazakhstan, Lebanon, Malaysia, Oman, Rwanda, Saudi Arabia, South Korea, Spain, Turkey, Uzbekistan, Venezuela, Vietnam, and the United States of America. Please remain standing until all of our graduates have entered the stadium. Please remain standing for a recording of the National Anthem performed by Colorado School of Mines singing group, The Natural Miners.
What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's A recording of the Mines Alma Mater will now be performed by the Natural Miners. The Alma Mater opens convocation and begins commencement, marking the transition from mine students to mines alumni. You can find the Alma Mater's lyrics on page two of your program. Please be seated. And now, please welcome the 17th president of the Colorado School of Mines, Dr. Paul Johnson. Thank you, and good afternoon. Doesn't it feel good to be together? Doesn't it feel good to be together? All right. Hey, welcome to all of you who've joined us here today, both here in Marv K Stadium and remotely. To our graduates, let me be the first to congratulate you on your accomplishments. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> we know that your path to this ceremony wasn't easy. A mines degree is challenging enough, but there were other hurdles for you. Some of you came to mines from other countries. Some of you earned your degrees while employed full time and some of you had families to feed and take care of. And then as if that wasn't enough, there has been a pandemic to deal with. And as a result, you had to learn new ways to learn. You had to find new ways to conduct your research. And you had to find new ways to stay healthy and support each other and stay connected to family, friends, and faculty. With that in mind, we'd like to start this commencement with a moment of reflection offered up by our soon-to-be Dr. Mary O'Brien who hopes to be graduating later today with her PhD in Metallurgical and Materials Engineering. So please uh, welcome Mary to the stage.
Thank you, President Johnson. Move this down, you are quite tall. <laughs> Members of the faculty and administration, fellow students, family, and friends, it is my honor and my privilege to offer an invocation for our commencement. Today we give thanks for this fine institution, the Colorado School of Mines, and hope that it may be a lively center for sound learning, new discovery, and the pursuit of wisdom. We hope that those who teach and those who learn may find joy in all their endeavors. As we celebrate the completion of our studies today, we hope to build on the knowledge we gained and the experiences that we had here to affect positive change in a world that has seen so much uncertainty and change in the past year. Whether we go on to complete further studies, go to the workforce, or if the wider world beckons, may we all live fulfilled lives that support others and contribute to society. We thank our dear friends and family who shared in and supported our educational journeys and for always believing in us. We also thank the frontline workers and the first responders who have made unimaginable sacrifices so that we may remain safe. We are thankful for the freedoms we enjoy to, pursu to pursue learning, life, and love. May we hope that we can constantly raise our eyes from the mundane and the predictable to catch a glimpse of the glorious possibilities of adventure and discovery. May we all proceed into the world with humble, thankful hearts and a reverence for those that changed the world before us that have allowed us to be here today. As we prepare to celebrate our academic achievements, we are aware that not all of our family and friends who shared in and supported our journeys to this point are with us today, including my father, Dr. Michael O'Brien. To conclude our invocation remarks, would you please join me in a moment of silence in reflection of their honor, in their honor. Thank you. And congratulations to this entire graduate class of 2021. Thank you, Mary. We, I guess I have to go to this podium. We have the best podium in the world. In engineering school, you'd expect to be able to go up and down like this. But anyway, Mary, thank you very much, and we're looking forward to seeing your hooding later in this ceremony. For our audience, the doctoral and master's degrees we will award today are the most advanced degrees attainable in the sciences and engineering. Our graduates are a very elite group, in part because fewer than 1% of adults ever complete a master's or doctoral degree in engineering or the hard sciences, and in part because their degrees are from a very unique university. Since our founding in 1874 and for the past 147 years, Colorado School of Mines has focused on producing the top scientists and engineers industry leaders and entrepreneurs, and the knowledge and innovations that the world needs. To do this, our graduate degree programs have always evolved to match the changing needs of industry and society. You can see that in today's commencement program. It lists what our graduates have studied and research, covering topics relevant to energy systems, the sustainable use of water and other natural resources, society's infrastructure for the future, advanced manufacturing materials, economic analyses, information technology, health, and even space exploration. So, where are our master's degree recipients? Would you all stand for a moment? All right. Yeah. You enrolled at Mines for various reasons, perhaps to get more depth in your major area or to gain new expertise in a second complementary engineering or science discipline. Some of you chose to acquire business management, data analytics, or computing skills, while others were attracted to our new interdisciplinary programs. Some of you also used this opportunity to continue to use your eligibility to participate in our nationally ranked NCAA athletics programs. We look forward to seeing you cross the stage in a little while, and it's okay to sit back down again. Congrats. Okay, let's see, how about our doctoral candidates? Why don't you stand up? 
All right, yeah. You came to Minds to work with our world-class faculty and to explore new frontiers in science and engineering. Through your research efforts, you are now the world's newest leading experts on topics that are critical to society, industry, and our future prosperity. You have developed new technologies and generated new knowledge that will be used to characterize our Earth and explore other planets, advance our global energy future, build and ensure that the infrastructure we all share and rely on is safe, and utilize, manage, and be better stewards of our planet's resources. You will hear more detail about a few of these doctoral students when Dr. Bradford presents this year's RATH Research Award. And uh, doctoral candidates, it's okay to sit down now. Thank you very much. Both our master's and doctoral students likely benefited from the support and encouragement of others. And so now we're gonna take a moment to thank all the rest of you for your support. Um, many of those who supported you are here today and others are watching on our live internet feed. So my re first request is that um, it's time for you to show a little bit of support because later we'll all be cheering you when you cross the stage. Um, interesting, not, uh, I probably need to give you directions on this because mine students are really interesting. They won't do something nice like you, like tell them it's okay. Th those, those cowbells that you maybe almost accidentally sat on when you sat down, it's like okay to use these now, okay? There we go. We might all have a headache from them by the end, but we're gonna use them now for sure. All right, would the parents of our graduates please stand? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, moms and dads. You probably discovered that being a graduate student par parent had its own unique challenges. For example, did the relatives and neighbors expect you to be able to explain what your son or daughter was studying or researching, All right? And did it seem to you that your son or daughter's ability to explain to you in simple terms what they were studying decreased with their time in graduate school? Yep, usually happens. And did that put you in the position of having to say to friends and relatives, he works with dirt, or she spends all day breaking metal pieces? or they do something with computers, but I don't really understand it. In any case, your encouragement and support meant a lot to our, your graduates. So thank you very much, moms and dads, and I wanna give a very special post-Mother's Day thanks to all the moms out there. Now, will all the spouses and significant others please stand? All right. You also provided emotional support and encouragement and perhaps financial support as well. I'm just guessing, but it's possible that some of you had to remind your loved one more than a few times that perpetual student was not an acceptable career choice. And that while lifelong learning is important in today's world, it needs to be done in combination with lifelong earning. So thank you for keeping these graduates focused on completion. I think you're getting a little better with those things every time. I like that. Uh, okay, how about the friends, siblings, other relatives, and coworkers? Where are you? Yeah. You're the group we affectionately refer to as the distractions. You were the ones enticing our graduates to sneak away and hit the trails, head to the ski slopes, take in a movie, or make the short tour of Coors a weekly event. Even though you may have prolonged their studies, you were really important to helping our graduates find their balance, and that is also critical to success in school and life. And thank you very much for being here today. The next group uh, that's here, some of them are here and some of them couldn't be because of capacity constraints, are our amazing faculty. Would the faculty here please stand and I think We've got a bunch who are uh, watching us online. Yes, please. Yep, we got some folks waving to you. These are the people who deliver on our mission to educate, inspire, and innovate. I like to brag that the Wall Street Journal named them the top faculty across all U.S. universities 
for the balanced dedication to both scholarly research and classroom instruction. I know our graduates saw firsthand how they stepped up and went out of their way to offer learning opportunities in person and remotely to make sure all students had the opportunity to progress towards today's graduation. They really put in a lot of effort this year. I think all of you saw that. Uh, this was a really tough year for our faculty, but um, because of them, for the most part, we're all here today. So let's give them a very special round of applause. Finally, we have members from our Colorado School of Mines Board of Trustees with us today. Would you please stand? All right. This is an elite and incredibly accomplished group that has appointed, been appointed by the governor of Colorado. They are scientists, engineers, CEOs, entrepreneurs, uh, and they are all dedicated to mine success and believe strongly in the importance of graduate education and research. And we might want to be sort of especially enthusiastic in our cheers and uh, bell ringing for them because a little later in the ceremony, they have to approve your degrees. So let's give them a hand. And in wrapping up this welcome, I would like to say that those trustees, along with the mine's faculty, staff, leadership, and alumni, all recognize your significant accomplishments and are proud to call you graduates of Colorado School Mines. My request to you is that you share and always carry that pride with you wherever you go in life and your career. And as you make your mark in the world, I hope that you find some way to help others pursue their education dreams. You are all hell of engineers, hell of a scientists, hell of a economists, and ore diggers for life. Congratulations. And now I'd like to invite to the podium Dr. Tim Barbary, our Dean of Graduate Studies and also a Mines alumnus. Thank you, President Johnson. I have the distinct pleasure today to introduce our student speaker, Nathan Johnson. Nathan is graduating today with a PhD in material science. Nathan's research whose thesis title he claims is too long and complicated to share here today, focused on, the, focused on the properties of titanium and stainless steel alloys that were manufactured using rapid solidification. During his time at Mines, he was a teaching assistant, a member of the President's Council on Diversity, Inclusion, and Access, and played intramural soccer where his team had a remarkable zero and 10 record. <laughs> yeah, you heard that right. Zero wins and 10 losses achieving excellence in futility on the soccer field. <laughs> he is currently a postdoctoral research associate at Stanford University, where he will be researching mathematical methods for X-ray diffraction analysis. Nathan says that he is considering a career in academia and would love any advice that our current faculty can offer. Join me in welcoming Nathan to the podium. Thank you so much for that introduction. Let me just adjust this real quick. Thank you so much, and everyone. It is so good to see you, not behind a screen. I didn't know if this day would get here, and not just because of the pandemic. I was pretty sure I had faked my way the whole way through grad school. I faked my way onto the stage. I hoodwinked President Johnson. I'm sure I'm not the only one who's felt this kind of imposter syndrome at some point during graduate school. We all have. Actually, here's a question for the graduates. Did this ever happen to you? At some point, someone was talking to you about school or research, and they said something really complicated and confusing, and then they looked at you and they said, do you understand? What did you do? You lied. Come on. <laughs> We've all done it. You said, of course I understand. No one wants to admit they don't know what's going on. I mean, Lord forbid my advisor find out that I'm still learning. During the pandemic, though, I think a lot of us really didn't know what was going on, and it wasn't a good feeling. But a lot of us had these feelings before the pandemic even started. I think we've all had our doubts along the way about whether or not we were on the right path. And to be frank, the events of the past year kind of put a damper on the end of a long journey, just a little bit. For those of you who don't know, everyone who completes a thesis has a thesis defense at the end of graduate school. 
This is where they get up in front of their professors, their colleagues, their peers, their friends and family, and they talk about their research. They prove that they are the expert in this subject matter. Now, if you ask any of these graduates, did you want to defend on Zoom? They'd probably say, well, they'd probably say I didn't want to defend in the first place, to be honest. A lot of us weren't actually convinced that we were the experts in the room. But we certainly did not want to defend over Zoom. During my own defense, and this is true, we went through four different virtual meetings across three platforms. We started about 30 minutes late, which was actually a blessing in disguise because it kept the questions and answers short. But the people who were there to see me defend, my committee, my advisor, my friends and family, those who stuck around for four calls, they were patient and they were kind and we worked together until we found a solution. And it's really this spirit of patience and kindness and perseverance that sums up so much of my time here at Colorado School of Mines. The community has always come together and helped me when I fell down. And there are so many moments during graduate school where it feels like it's all going to slip away. I mean, your funding could change, your advisor moves schools, your experiments don't work, your papers don't get published, your classes aren't going well. For me, the moment where it really felt like it was going to slip away was May 17th of 2017. I got the call that no PhD student wants to get. I found out that I had failed my qualifying exam. And for those of you who don't know, a qualifying exam is something every PhD student takes to show that they've got the base knowledge in their subject matter. If you complete it, you go on to your research, and if you don't do so well, you have to have a difficult conversation about whether or not this path is right for you. But my advisor, my professors, they were kind, they were patient, and they worked with me to show me the gaps in my knowledge, and they gave me a second chance. So now I get to be here before you today. And when we fall short, we as a community try to hold each other accountable as well, which I think is wonderful. In 2018, President Johnson launched the uh, Diversity, Inclusion, and Access program on campus. And this is an initiative that's dedicated to making sure that our campus environment is safe and hospitable and welcoming to all kinds of people. They did their research. They reached out to the community. They listened to students and members of the community, and they learned about their lived experiences. And they're still working to this day to improve that community. We still have a long way to go, but I'm sure that if we're kind and we're patient, we can improve our community even more and make it safe for all people. But the spirit of kindness and patience and perseverance really showed its colors to me at the end of grad school. Unfortunately, my issues with imposter syndrome go beyond just self-deprecating jokes and extend into the realm of mental health and mental illness. And the pandemic really exacerbated a lot of those problems that I was having. So I spoke up and the community responded. My advisor, the Dean of Students Office, they got together and they got me the help that I needed so that I could be here before you today. And I really wish that I could say my struggle with mental health was unique. Thank you. <laughs> but I really wish I could say that my experience was unique. And I know that it's not. I think President Johnson mentioned it, but we've all seen the toll that graduate school can take on people. But often it's the feelings that we carry the heaviest that we stay silent about, that we don't speak up to others about, even the ones that love us the most. And our silence extends beyond our fear of voicing our own dark thoughts. Our silence extends into the community that we create. Often we don't speak out when we see bigotry or discrimination, either in actions or in our institutions. We stay silent when we're confronted with difficult ethical questions about our research, and we don't ask ourselves if we're culpable for the consequences of the world that we create. So often we're afraid to have that difficult conversation, either with ourselves, with our loved ones, or with our community, even though those difficult conversations can lead to so much positive change. More often than not, we as grad students gaslight ourselves and we say, these feelings are normal. Everyone went through this. This is how it has to be. I don't think that's true. I don't think it has to be this way. Graduate school was already difficult. Before a pandemic and a lockdown and protests and violence and an election and grief and loss and breakups and uncertainty and anxiety, before all of that, grad school was already hard. It takes a special kind of person to achieve these degrees you're being conferred today. 
But achieving it with all of this going on, that takes a hell of an engineer. I know that we're at the end of a very long journey and we're all very tired. But all that I ask is that we do our best to speak up, both about our own issues with mental health, we ask our community members how they're doing, and we strive with patience and kindness and perseverance to create a better community that's hospitable for all people. I would like to congratulate all of our graduates today, all of their family members, and everyone on making it through this journey. Thank you so much. Nathan, great job, and we, uh, we look forward to seeing uh, you being hooded later the ceremony as well. So, uh, let's see. At this point, I would like to introduce Dr. Dr John Bradford. He's our Interim Vice President of Research and Technology Transfer, and John is going to speak to us about the important role that our graduate students have in research, and he's going to announce the winner of the RATH Research Award. John? Thank you, President Johnson, and good, nap good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's really a great job that I get, so I, I uh, am really looking forward to this. So the role that our graduate students have in research is well illustrated by the RATH Research Award, which recognizes the PhD thesis with the potential for greatest domestic societal impact. This goal, societal impact, is at the core of mines research and has been from our origins in supporting gold and silver mining nearly 150 years ago. So I had the privilege of reading the nominations for the award and was struck by how well they exemplify MINDS research across the board, especially in terms of depth, diversity, and relevance to society. For instance, you, our graduate students, have been working hard in the lab and in the field, and for an unusually large number of you this year, you have been deeply buried in complex, multi-dimensional calculations, all in order to change the world. For instance, you have found new microbes in deep rocks on Earth that could explain observations of methane cycling on Mars, and may help to lead to the discovery of life on other planets. You've developed advanced computational tools that can help discover new materials that transform the way we store and use energy. You changed our understanding of nuclear magnetic resonance, which will help identify environmental contaminants in water systems or monitor CO2 storage in deep geologic reservoirs. Many of you in the audience may be more familiar with this kind of technology as uh, an MRI for medical imaging. You have advanced us toward a new energy future by creating computer models that optimize infrastructure and minimize operational costs for re renewable energy sources such as solar and wind. You are solving problems that matter and benefit the world. You, our graduate students, represent the full range of our mission as a public institution. You teach, you work with the community, and you conduct research. And in doing all these things, you remind us that knowledge isn't static. Today, more than ever before, as the world changes faster than any one of us can comprehend, knowledge needs to grow and evolve. And in the many professional roles that you are soon to take on, you are critical to solving the problems presented by this complex, dynamic world in which we live. So now, in the context of solving problems for the world, let's get back to where I started with the RATH Research Award. This award, was established several years ago by Dr. Bakta Rath, who was at the time a senior official at the Naval Research Laboratory in Washington, D.C. He is also a member of the National Academy of Engineering, along with a very long list of other awards and honors, and truly passionate about the role of research in society. Before I announce the winner, I would like to acknowledge and recognize all of the finalists for the Rath Award. Dr. Olawasheyun Ogunmodede, in the uh, Operations Research with Engineering Graduate Program. Dr. Kurt Levo, Petroleum Engineering Department. Dr. Ryther Anderson, Chemical and Biological Engineering. Dr. Emily Krauss, Civil and Environmental Engineering. And Dr. Emilio Castillo, Division of Economics and Business. Congratulations to all of you for your outstanding scholarship and thesis. And now the winner of this year's RATH Research Award is Dr. Emilio Castillo.
Emilio is currently in Chile, and unfortunately, due to COVID-19 travel restrictions, cannot join us today. Emilio's dissertation is titled, An Analysis of Depletion, Taxation, and Exploration. Emilio was advised by Dr. Rod Eggert from the Economics and Business Department. Within Emilio's thesis, there are three standalone papers in applied mineral economics, each focusing on a topic of importance to our understanding of mineral resources. The first paper focuses on resource depletion and the long-term availability of copper, an element that is expected to experience significant growth in demand as we begin to rely on the direct use of electricity rather than burning fossil fuels. Much of the policy discussion about resource availability assumes that we are in danger of running out of resources such as copper and hitting peak production in the next 15 years. Emilio's extensive research finds that peak production, followed by declining productivity, is pushed further into the future than most recent studies suggest. His research indicates that we should be concerned about factors other than depletion when thinking about future availability of copper. This paper appears in Resources, Conservation, and Recycling, a leading journal on resource availability and use. The second paper focuses on mineral taxation and how public policy influences investment in mineral exploration. Mineral taxation has received attention in theoretical studies and simulation, but there is relatively little empirical analysis. Emilio's research on this topic utilized an econometric approach that is applied in other areas of empirical research, but had not previously been used in mineral economics. Emilio evaluated the impact of changes on Chilean mining royalties from 2004 to 2010, and finds that royalty changes had relatively small impacts on expenditures and early stage mineral exploration. This paper is currently under review at the Resources Policy Journal, arguably the leading journal in mineral economics. The third paper in Emilio's thesis focuses on mineral exploration and the discovery of previously unknown mineral deposits. This is important because an ongoing question in mineral policy is, how important relative to one another are the quality of institutions and the maturity of a region or country in terms of geologic potential in determining the level and success of mineral exploration. Emilio's research efforts find that more and larger discoveries are more likely to occur in countries with strong protection of property rights. This means that there are important implications for public policy toward property rights and in, uh, mineral exploration. Emilio, your research is clearly having a significant impact with ripple effects that we expect to see for many years to come. We look forward to following your accomplishments in the future and we congratulate you on your award. Thank you, Dr. Bradford. All right, you all awake out there? I'm not, I'm not too sure, we'll see. Okay, this is the part in the program that you really came here for. This is when the graduates are gonna cross the stage, so Get ready to make a lot of noise. Uh, the way it's gonna work is first we'll recognize our um, doctoral degree recipients. There'll be about 20 of them. And then they'll be followed by our master's degree recipients. Uh, there'll be about 180-ish of, of those. The doctoral recipients, when they cross the stage, they'll be accompanied um, by the chair of their doctoral dissertation committee or someone else that they've chosen to accompany them for the doctoral hooding ritual. This involves placing a rather odd-looking piece of clothing around their mentee's neck, and sometimes this can be entertaining, especially if there are height differences. Um, and the movements and head bobbing are sometimes unique to each student-mentor relationship, which can be very stressful in the weeks surrounding the PhD dissertation defense. Um, so they'll, they'll come up. We're gonna uh, greet folks when they cross the stage. I'm gonna invite our provost, uh, Dr. Holst, and uh, the relevant department heads to join me uh, and congratulating them as they, they cross the stage. Um, sometimes Dr. Holtz has a little um, internal competition going for which departments actually do the hooding the right way. Um, so he keeps track and uh, we'll get that going with you. Okay, let's see, a few other things. Um, first, for graduates when you're crossing the stage, whatever you feel comfortable doing, uh, elbow bumping, fist bumping is totally okay. If you don't feel comfortable with anything, that's okay. We won't feel like you're being rude or anything, it's okay. So do whatever you feel comfortable with as you're crossing uh, the stage, we're here for you. Um, parents, uh, this is where you get to make a lot of noise, okay? Um, if you're in the stands, you can use your feet. You wanna practice? There you go. Excellent, 
If you brought any noisemakers with you, it's totally okay to use them. Um, this point of the ceremony, we, we sort of ask for some formality from our uh, students as they cross the stage, but for the audience and everybody else, just go wild, okay? Right? Yeah. Should we practice? Let's, let's like practice going wild. Okay, that's pretty good. You're going to have to go wild in a little while, even wilder, but we'll get to there when we get to that point. But in any case, um, I think we're, we're, we're ready. I think, the, I think they're on our way. Is that right, Leah? <laughs> it's a long way from over there, back over here. Rick, you want to hop up? Yeah. From Civil and Environmental Engineering, Dr. Junko Mankaramar, Department Head. Dr. Sandeep Katwal, presented by Shi Ling Pei and Marty Gutierrez. Dr. Emily Kraus, presented by John R. Spear. Dr. Emily Kraus, presented by John R. Spear. <laughs> Dr. Charlie Liu, presented by Christopher L. Bologna and Timothy J. Strathman. Metallurgical and Materials Engineering, Dr. Angus A. Rocket, Department Head. Dr. Mary O'Brien, presented by Kip O. Findlay. Dr. Larissa Vilela Costa, presented by Kip O. Findlay. From Geology and Geological Engineering, Dr. Wendy Borson, Department Head. Dr. William Artker, presented by Richard F. Wendland. From Chemical and Biological Engineering, Dr. Anush Chauhan, Department Head. Dr. Reither Anderson, presented by Diego A. Gomez Guadron. Dr. David Goggin. Presented by Joseph S. Zemaniak. <laughs> Dr. Zhen Yu Zhang. Presented by Colin A. Walden and James D. Wei.
From Mechanical Engineering, Dr. Jason Porter, Department Head. Dr. Peter Caltagirone, presented by John R. Berger. <laughs> From Petroleum Engineering, Dr. Jennifer Miss Gimmins, Department Head. Dr. Mohammed Althani, presented by Ertel Ozkan. Dr. Deep Joshi, presented by Alfred W. Eustace and Jamal Rustami. Dr. Kurt Levo, presented by Monica Prasad. Dr. Juan Caratu, presented by Jennifer L. Miskimmons. From Computer Science, Dr. Tracy K. Camp, Department Head. Dr. Brian Riley, presented by Hao Zhang. Representing Interdisciplinary Graduate Programs, Dr. Tim Barbari. Dean of Graduate Studies. Dr. Anna Riken, presented by Reed M. Maxwell. Dr. Nathan Johnson, presented by Craig A. Bryce and Aaron P. Stebner. Dr. Long Lay, presented by Neil P. Sullivan. Dr. Megan Papik, presented by Ryan O'Hare. Dr. Ryan Collette, presented by Jeffrey C. King. Dr. Joseph Latta, presented by Uwe Greifer. Dr. Oluwashion Ogunmodede, presented by Alexandra M. Newman and Gregory E. Bogan.
Dr. Anuradha Ketwal, presented by Jamal Rastami. Dr. Hong Jie Yu, presented by Michael A. Mooney and Xiao Li Zhang. From Mining Engineering, Dr. M. Stephen Enders, Department Head. Suet Hagus. Haijie Ren. Ali Vasugian. From Civil and Environmental Engineering, Dr. Junko Mankara Mar, Department Head. Emma Braun. Tessa Drinnen. Robert Johansson. Christy Kent. Matthew Koba, Lucas Crow, Colin O'Connor, Adrian Perez, Nicholas Potter. Leon Salfidi. Jake Stogdill. Paul Tessio. Victoria Waters. Shay Zeman. Caitlin Coplets. Francis Lee. Nicole Masters. Sierra Mitchell. Nicholas Sow. From Metallurgical and Materials Engineering, Dr. Angus A. Rocket, Department Head. Megan Wheeler. Jennifer Thogerson. From Electrical Engineering, Dr. Peter Owen, Department Head. John Icke. Elliot Call. Matthew Polmiller. David Werner. From Geology and Geological Engineering, Dr. Wendy Borson, Department Head. Ryan Coe. Brooke Everly. Julia Hahn. Dominic Tacalini. Lauren Herbert. Brian Hankins.
Cahill Kelligan. Casey Cuss. Aditya Perdono. Patrick Sullivan. Nasser Al Nasser. Brunal Bagwat. Matthew Hartso. From Mechanical Engineering, Dr. Jason Porter, Department Head. Afla Al Abri. Cameron Beaton. Nicholas Brunstead. Ian Chang. Robert Gambrell. Noah Gomes. Noah Autumn. Umur Harman. Megan Hinky. Ryan Jackson. Bradley Jested. Rainika Knight. Jessica Horry. Michelle Butler. Rafael Segura Suarez. Bhuvan Tej Kanagiri. Lydia Meyer. Christopher Parker. Keaton Scheffler. Benjamin Topper. Brianne Treffner. Christina Venny. Zachary Woosley. Ashok Viswanath. Mansour Al Gamdi, Ana Arajo Cespedes, Santiago Rocha, from Geophysics, Dr. Paul Sava. Department Head. Matham Alabad. John Anderson. Jacob Conrad. Spencer Goodwin, 
Glendon Rewards. Amanda Hansen. Devin Payne. From Chemistry, Dr. Thomas Jeanette, Department Head. Spencer Sherman. From Computer Science, Dr. Tracy K. Camp, Department Head. Carl Anderson. Andrew Bukowski. Leo Chely. Joshua Dorsey. Aaron Frank. Jackson Garner. Daniel Hanazak. Andrew Harrelson. Joseph Kim. Evan Lim. Lorena Loving. Sydney Lynch. Matthew Peters. Matthew Siva. From Economics and Business, Dr. Scott Hauser, Department Head. Bias Adabrata. Amru Ashur. Prim Atmaja. James Bauer. Sophia Becker. Jacob Bejarano. Clayton Brunts. Charles Collins. Wyatt DeSell. Amanda Field. Ryan Forrest. Madeline Geeson. Olivia Geeson. Evan Gill. Matthew Harley. Trevor Howard. Zachary Johnson. Claire Knight. Harrison Cottonstead. Matthew Christ. Kelly McKinney. Aaron Pampalone. Madison Smith. Nicole Ziss Kleinabing. Kenneth Larson. Jeffrey Lee. Skylar Likens. 
John Riley. Nathan Renfrew. Jonathan Ryan. Harmanpreet Singh. Max Sweeney. Saman Tagavi Dilamani. Kyle Ullery. Wei Wan. Robert Ward. Caleb Workman. Rashid Zakharov. Othman Al Abdul Wahab. Joaquin Captavila Taboado. Alexander Gebbin. Sarah Jones. Megan Langley. Kevin Tu. Juliana Anderson. Kayla Hubbard. Kelsey Beekler. Olivia Holt. Varlik Kizilorin. Kara Osgan. Callie Prasad. Mohammed Amr Shams. Ming Jun So. Young Ji Son. From Humanities, Arts, and Social Sciences, Dr. Hussein A. Amory, Department Head. Rawa Aziz. Emily Boswell. Raquel Lucero Schnell. Annie Strange. Yara Alexandra Lima. Audrey Miller. Jacob Aguilar. Carter Gray. Charles Cook. Gabriel Quartz. Douglas Meredith. Reginald Phillips. Leo Shepard Martinez. Stefan Kistler. Christian Rooney. Okay, we're gonna do something special here. As if we weren't doing something special already. We've been doing a lot of special stuff. But um, we're gonna take a, a little break in the program here to give some attention to the next students who are gonna walk across the stage. It's, it's been a tradition at Minds uh, to give a gift to the first student, or in this case, first two students, to graduate from a new program. And today we have the first two graduates ever from our new Humanitarian Engineering and Science program. 
And this was a program that was established with a gift um, provided uh, to us uh, from a, a very generous donor. And the professors in the program have created a special gift to give to uh, these students. Do we have, we do have two, okay, excellent, good. And so um, I think Dr. Barber is gonna help me with this. He's got a, exam do we have two of those or just, we do have two, okay. So we've got these awesome looking plaques. You want, why don't you stand like in the middle and show them? So these, these were made by the faculty in our uh, engineering design science program. And uh, it's, a, it's a framed poster and commemorates the distinction of these two students as the first ever to graduate from this program. All right. Haley Glover. Paige Cadavy. Jordan Brothers. Ryan Fennell. Brenna Trainer. Andrew Whittle. Michael Levy. Connor Glatt. Beric Burgumbayev. Sai Luke. Sarah Evans. Brent Janda. Brandon Reynolds. Seraphim Therianos. Whitney Visgottis. Kevin Bernard. Kent Carson. Aiden Naughton. Neil Schoenwetter III. Timothy Broslov. Bailey Burns. Stuart Ray. John Sangri, Jonathan Slavic, David Western, Ryan O'Connell, yeah, how about a big round of applause for all of our master's degree recipients? Huh? Actually, I lied to you. There's one more. Um, it's okay. It's a really good one. And Dr. Fox is going to do, is Dr. Fox here? Yes, Dr. Dan Fox, our Vice President for Student Life, is, is going to announce our last student. Thank you, President Johnson. This year, our graduating students on the varsity softball team are missing commencement due to the competition in the RMAC championships taking place at Colorado Mesa University. Uh, they played earlier today. If you didn't know, we won. Uh, we beat Regis five to two. <laughs> and we're playing again at four o'clock, so hopefully uh, this graduate will be able to get to see this live because it's getting time for them to warm up. Um, but one of the graduating students from the softball team is earning her master's degree today. I'm told these student athletes are watching live, so that's what the script says they must be. 
So let's be sure to give them a real rousing round of applause way over they can hear us in, in Grand Junction. So Clara Larson is a master's recipient earning her degree in computer science. And Clara, I hope you can hear me. I saw you hit a bomb in game one. She hit a home run in game one and was part of the scoring for our team. So go our diggers, go women's softball. Congratulations, Clara. Okay, now congratulations again to all the master's degree recipients. Huh? Okay, we're getting close. Now we're gonna have a brief alumni welcome by our uh, Vice Chair, Board of Trustees, Jesus Salazar. So graduates, today you leave minds as the beneficiaries of a world-class education, one that's prepared you well for what's about to come next. I hope you're as proud and as joyful as I was to walk across the stage knowing you've graduated from one of the most rigorous engineering and science universities in the world. Your mind's education has given you the means not only to solve problems, but to innovate for the benefit of society. You came here from every point on the globe to learn, to build, and create together. You found common opportunity here, and that gives me great hope for the future. Yesterday, you're members of a highly select group, students of the Colorado School of Mines. Today, you're members of a very loyal and very proud group, the Colorado School of Mines alumni. And I want you to know that around the globe, you'll find other Mines alumni who know what you are made out of. Welcome to the Colorado School of Mines alumni community. Congratulations. I forgot to mention that Trustee Salazar is a, a double alumnus of Colorado School Mines with his uh, first degree in computer science. Any comp sci folks out there? Okay. And his uh, second degree was from his first, first class, very first class graduating with the uh, engineering technology and management degree. Any of you all out there? All right. Excellent. Okay. We are just about done. Do you want the uh, long ending or the short ending? Okay. I, was that the short one you said? <laughs> I think over there, a parent said, let's get to the short one really quick. Okay. So um, we got to do one more thing. We've got to make these degrees official. And to do that, I'm going to need the help of Provost Holtz, who you've seen before up here. Uh, and I'm going to call back up uh, Board of Trustees Chair Tom Jordan, and he's going to help us as well. Um, please hop up here. I'm going to ask Provost Holtz to tell us a little bit about our graduates and then uh, and then after that we're going to say some magic words and make the degrees official and uh, have a have a rousing send-off for everybody. So Provost Holtz please. Okay. Where are we? Here we go. All right so Today, we are conferring degrees to 28 doctoral candidates and 73 master's degree recipients. This graduating class also includes 30 student athletes who participated in NCAA Division II varsity sports at Mines. Of those 30 that are participating in this degree uh, ceremony, seven All-American, of note soon to be Dr. Soon Omunde, one of the Rath Award finalists, was an All-American in track and field. Five academic All-Americans, 19 have been RMAC champions, either as a member of a team or as an individual competitor. 18 have appeared in NCAA postseason competition, and one was a member of the national championship cross-country team, Grant Colligan. And for the past five years, our student, our athletics program has owned the RMAC Cup, recognizing the most successful program in the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. That's amazing. Let's hear it for our student athletes.
So President Johnson, this class has clearly distinguished, distinguished itself in our classrooms, in our research groups, and on the field. Congratulations to all of them. Okay, uh, here's how this is gonna work. Um, three of us, that's us three, yep, one, two, three. We're gonna, we're gonna read the words that make your degrees official. Um, hopefully we'll get them right or we gotta like start the whole ceremony all over again. Fortunately, we haven't had to do that in the last two years, right? Yeah, last time was maybe like three years ago. Anyway, uh, it wasn't good, so we'll be pretty careful about this. Um, when, we each the, when we reach the end of uh, conferring of the degrees, and it'll probably be pretty obvious to you, um, that's, a, that's a great opportunity for us, again, to congratulate all of our degrees. And um, please feel free to stomp as much as you want in the stands, crank up on the air horns, use those bells, do whatever you want to to make noise. Um, and uh, right after we do the, the sort of little tassel switching thing, we're gonna see, in, in honor of the softball team, which is gonna play f in uh, about a half an hour, um, we're gonna play a video of them singing the fight song, okay? So clap along with that. Um, we've, we've I, I guess you get a choice. Do you, would you like the really fast version that they do it or the slow version? Slow. <laughs> Okay. okay, we'll see which one pops up in the, actually we do have both a fast and a slow version from the softball team, so we'll see, we'll see which one pops up from them. Um, when that's done, then we are gonna make as uh, much noise as possible, and um, faculty senate representative, Professor Handorian, where is, where is she hiding? Okay, she's over here. She's gonna hop up, and, and the Dave Ray Metallica, which is standing here up on the stand, She's gonna hold it up. When she closes the book, the ceremony officially ends, um, but she only is gonna close it when she figures like we've given these graduates a good enough send off, okay? So, um, and she's a, I've heard she's a tough grader. So, we're, I think we're gonna have to be loud at this one. Um, when, the, when she closes the book, um, some music is gonna kick in, and uh, at that point, the platform party is gonna try to escape and I just ask everybody to sort of stay put for a moment as the platform party makes its way off because we have to do three more ceremonies over the next couple of days and I need every one of them. Um, and we've lost a few in the past, so we don't, we don't wanna do that this year. So anyway, okay, everybody ready for this? Let's do a warm up noise making thing, right? Okay. All right. Provost Holt, you ready? ready? Chairman Jordan, you ready? Graduates, please stand. Okay, Dr. Holtz. Thank you. With today's candidates, oh, you're already rising, so I don't have to do that part. Oh, we gotta start all over. Oh, no. no, no. The whole ceremony, no, no, we'll, we'll, nobody heard that, right? All right, President Johnson, with the approval of the faculty, I recommend that the doctoral professional masters of science or Master of Engineering degree as appropriate be conferred upon these candidates. The candidates who are unable to be present today will be awarded their degrees in absentia. Their names appear in the program. Thank you, Provost Holtz. Trustee Jordan, I present to the Board of Trustees these amazing candidates. Each has been recommended by the faculty to receive his or her degree and I concur with the amazing faculty of Colorado School Minds. It is my great honor to present these amazing candidates for your acceptance. President Johnson, by action of and on behalf of the Board of Trustees of the Colorado School of Minds, taken on May 7th, 2021, I direct you to award these candidates the degrees they have earned. Congratulations, graduates. So the, the fun part of this is that's not actually the end. <laughs> so hang on just for a minute. So I've got, I've got two more lines to get through. Then the fight song is gonna go. Then crank up the noise. Then we're gonna see if the book closes. Then we're gonna escape. So platform party, you ready to run? Okay, all right, so 
upon recommendation of the faculty and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I confer upon all those who have been recommended by the faculty the degrees of doctorate, professional master, master of science, or master of engineering with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. Congratulations, class of 2021. And if you have a tassel, you can move that to the other side right now. You're all amazing. I hope to see you in the future. Good luck with everything. Time for a fight song and then a lot of yelling and screaming and noise making. Ah!